Hello, thank you for stopping by. I'm so glad you're here. This is going to be Friday Sews number two. Uh, I did this last week and I found that I really enjoyed the process. I think these videos will be really helpful for me to just state what I have done, uh, declare what I intend to do, and sort of mentally work out how I'm gonna go through the process and get everything done in the best manner possible. So what I did do this week was finish up my previous shirt with the, like, uh, the button, like the bib front button closure. And I had a little bit more trouble with it than I was expecting, but I also liked the pattern more than I was expecting to. So like I said in my video, I ordered the same pattern in a medium size. So next time maybe I won't have as many fit issues with it and I can work from that. So my next big project coming up is to make another version of this shirt that I'm wearing right now. I will be using this yellow fabric, which is the same property wise as this blue one. I think I mentioned in a previous video that this blue shirt had yellow cross threads. I misremembered it is white, um, but it's still the same fabric, just different colors. This one is yellow with blue cross threads. But with this shirt, as I wear it, it has softened up really nicely. Um, and the white cross threads sort of come out a little bit more as the blue fades. So it gives it sort of like a visual texture that I really like. So I think that after I make a shirt with this yellow fabric and I wash it a little bit, it will mellow out a little bit and the blue will come out some. And I'm hoping it's gonna look really cool. For this shirt, I am using this uh, 1930s sewing pattern, which I have made once before. Uh, this time I'm not pulling it out of the case because I have already traced the pieces off. This is my big book of patterns that I have traced. I need to come up with a better organization system for this, but basically once I trace off a pattern, I put it in one of these like sheet protectors in this binder. Um, so I have all of them in here and then I try to do roughly by date which ones I use. So I'm gonna be using the traced off pattern rather than the original pattern pieces. And just as a side note, the paper that I use for tracing, I got this off Amazon and it's sort of like a, almost like a parchment paper, maybe a little bit more malleable. It's a very uh, lightweight uh, sort of translucent paper so I can lay it down on the pattern and see everything through. Um, it is just a little bit, like just slightly heavier weight than normal pattern tissue paper. Uh, so I like this a lot. I know there are a lot of different varieties and I have thought about getting the ones with like the different dots or numbers on them. I don't do a lot of altering patterns right now. Um, I might try that in the future, like altering or drafting patterns. My problem is that I also really like collecting sewing patterns, which is sort of a different hobby from sewing, even though they connect together. So um, I will maybe in the future try to figure out how to draft things and change, alter patterns and things, but Right now, uh, I get a lot of joy from collecting the sewing patterns and working with them. So I'm gonna stick with that for a bit. But anyways, this is the like sort of lightweight paper that I use for tracing patterns off. And I find it folds up really ne neatly uh, so I can stick it in that book. And then when I need it, it irons out really well. I can get multiple uses out of it without it falling apart. And I don't have to store it hanging to keep, uh, to prevent creases and things because it irons back out so neatly. So a couple of other things that have gone on and continue to go on this week are that, uh, first of all, I did get two new sewing machines in. I didn't really expect to get two new sewing machines, but uh, just ended up working out that way. The first is a Singer 327, and it is actually in my sewing table right now. I have gone through, cleaned it, and oiled it, and got it in nice sewing condition. It's making really pretty stitches. And I did film a video just going through cleaning and oiling that. It's not the most interesting video in the world. Uh, it's just sort of me sitting there cleaning and oiling a machine and uh, sort of almost stream of thought. <laughs> Uh, stream of consciousness talking about what I'm doing but I am almost finished editing that and it will go up tomorrow morning just um, if anybody's interested in just watching the, sh the process of cleaning and oiling it and I'm going to be using that machine to sew my next shirt so uh, just to get a little bit of practice on it and see how I like it the second machine I got I just came last night so I haven't spent as much time on it yet is this uh, Montgomery Ward signature sewing machine so it's got uh, you know straight stitch, zigzag. It's got, it came with a set of cams. It's got a built-in buttonhole function. So it's a little bit later of a model of sewing machines. I haven't gone through it all yet to see if it's all metal internal, but it certainly feels like it. It weighs about 45 pounds. Sorry if you can hear the cat playing in the packaging from that machine. He's crawling into the box. So I am gonna go through clean and oil that. I'm not gonna film that process but I'm gonna get that one ready to sew. And then I might go do a video of just going through how everything works with that one. Uh, just if anybody else has that machine so they can look it up to see you know, how to work it. 
Uh, another thing is I did get this. Uh, I mentioned this in my last video and I got this in the mail. Uh, this is an ultra uh, sewing kit. So this is a hoodie and it is all of the like fabric pieces and everything you need to sew a hoodie. I'm guessing this is like from the 80s maybe. Maybe it's 90s. I don't know. It's complete. It's still in the bag and everything and it looks complete. Uh, but I'm going to be making this. I thought that'll be a pretty fun process. So I think this is next on my list after I finish the yellow version of this shirt. And uh, I'm pretty excited to give this one a try. It's not something I have seen before and it seems like a really fun concept. All right, next on my list of things that are coming up is I did finally print off this pattern. Let's see if you can see it. I printed off this pattern for Barbie clothes. <laughs> so I'm gonna go through and, you know, make a dress or two of this. I like this one because it is very distinctively like 1950s sort of look. So I'm gonna go through and try to make a couple of these. Uh, it's got all the pattern pieces which are like super like small and adorable. I don't know how I'm gonna do like closures and things. I might have to find some like really tiny little buttons you know like Barbie dresses have on them. But that's just something sort of sillier and more fun that I want to play around with. And also it lets me sew women's clothing when I don't have any women to sew for. So that's just a quick wrap up of what's been going on. I finished that bib front shirt and I'm going to be making that again in the future using a smaller version of the pattern. I got that Singer 327 uh, cleaned and oiled and it's sewing really nicely. Even though it's not, uh, it's not really a, a super top of the line machine or like super desirable. But I think it's a pretty solid little machine. I got this board signature machine, which is just a badge Japanese zigzag machine, uh, but it looks pretty cool. And I really uh, was drawn to the color on that one. So I'm gonna go through, get that one cleaned and oiled. I forgot to mention uh, the machine is in good condition. The wooden case got pretty much destroyed. Uh, it's not usable the way it is. I will take that as when I've had other cases destroyed in the shipping process. And as long as the machine is in good condition, I'm happy with it because I know what risk I'm taking when I get a sewing machine mailed to me. So I'm gonna start on my next shirt, the version of this one in yellow. And I hope to get that done this weekend if I can you know, push through it. That way I will be able to edit the video next week and have the shirt video up for next weekend. But no guarantees on that. It just depends on how busy I get with other things. You know, life happens. Then I'm gonna be sewing this ultra hoodie sewing kit. And then I'm gonna be making a couple of little Barbie dresses here and there. So those things will be happening over the next weeks to like month or so. Uh, I'm not sure how long everything's gonna take, but I've just uh, been really sort of enjoying my sewing process. I got a little bit uh, reinvigorated with it. And that's sort of the way it goes. I have, you know, highs and lows where I'm really motivated for sewing. I've got a lot of creative ideas. And then periods where like, uh, it just nothing really speaks to me and I'm just like not that into it. But for right now, I've got a lot of ideas and I'm very motivated to continue on. I think the weather has a lot to do with it because once it starts warming up a little bit and I start getting more sunshine and vitamin D, uh, magically I start getting more motivated. It seems to be like the beginning and the end of the cold seasons are when I feel like least motivated. Uh, in the middle, you know, I'm sort of adjusted to it and, you know, living my life. But uh, it's the bookends of the like coldest part of winter that really, <laughs> I think, demotivate me the most. That is all that I have for this week. It seems that there are some people who do find these videos interesting and I really appreciate all of you for watching. I realize that these videos are fairly helpful for me too as a way of uh, just organizing my thoughts by stating them out loud and keeping myself motivated and on task for future projects. So I will be checking back again next Friday. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the future.